Hello and welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to... I haven't moved my microphone in front of my mouth yet. Give me a second, sorry about that. Here we go, that should be better. Welcome to The Suffering. Um, now, this is an absolute gem of a game from... I think 2006, 2007, something along that, those lines. I don't exactly remember the release date. You can find out very easily online. The Suffering is a third-person horror action game where you assume the role of Talk, a convicted death row felon in the midst of a very weird demon invasion. Now, Talk is convicted of murdering his wife and two sons, which uh, is, you know, quite the crime in, in pretty much any and, and all societies, but the exact circumstances of the crime are unknown. He doesn't remember anything, and, uh, well, the story unfolds from there and you learn things. Initially, your plan is to escape the prison alive, but, um... What makes this game so bloody awesome are the abilities that you unlock. Now, I don't want to spoil anything too much, but there is a lot of paranormal stuff happening here. And I want to give you an example of that in one particular room, which is here. That person is tied to an electric chair, I think. You can press this button, but you don't have to. When you come in, there is a voice inside your head that goes... Press the button, make him suffer, or, uh, I don't know, stuff like that. Um, you can also interact with the cameras. You can turn the lights on and off. Now, Juggernaut, why are you exactly telling us this? Well, for a game in 2022, this isn't particularly revolutionary, but for the time... Ooh, boy, for the time... Yes, this was, uh, this was quite amazing. Now, here's the thing. Can I open this? Because I remember that... Oh. Can't, can I? There's no way to let him out. Oh, well, that is... At least I don't think there's a way to let him out. I don't see a way of letting him out. Um, I remember... The last time I played this game... Oh, for crying out loud. Could you please open it faster, because, uh, well, I need to get out. Oh. Fudge muffin. Okay. We're alive. Game's not easy, by the way. <laughs> there is, um... Well. I think the early level is particularly difficult, if I remember right. Um, you can dodge rather effectively. And also, one of the, the things that game the game sort of displays early on, almost like a tech demo of sorts, is the fact that your character can get blood all over him from fighting, and from, you know, getting hurt. Um, yeah, that was, again, at the time, stuff like this was absolutely revolutionary. And worth showing off. Nowadays, it loses some of its charm, but... I suppose that's to be expected. Anyways, um, I want to show you what makes the game really, really awesome. Aside from the really cool enemy design, the interactivity with the, well, things around you, and the whole moral system, which has very, very real consequences to the core gameplay. Um, but like I said, I want to show you the moment this game gets really awesome and the moment it bought me, because so far it's a, you know, third-person action horror game, nothing too 
exciting, nothing too fabulous. Um, you have a revolver, which doesn't do a whole load of damage. You unlock some pretty cool weapons later down the line, mostly in terms of, um, you know, realistic ballistic weapons. Machine guns, submachine guns, shotguns, etc., etc. But then... There is, uh... Well, I'm not sure if it's now or a bit later. But, uh, well, I'll just spoil it, because if you're watching up until now, you'd, you'd probably be interested, right? There is that whole entity. Gruesome. A long time. I don't understand much about this place, but I know your being here ain't no coincidence. <laughs> well, well, well. Look what we have here. How long I have been waiting to encounter such a fascinating specimen. My understanding is you've had periodic blackouts since when was it? Ah, oh, yes. Early adolescence. Ever wonder what happens during those blackouts? Would you say you have visions of bloodshed? Yes, surely there is bloodshed. You've seen death, right? I read about your life, you sick bastard. I did play the game in like 2008, I think, or 2009, something like that. Did you really do it? A uh, bit after it came out. But I seem to recall when exactly the game bought me, so to speak, and when I uh, became infatuated with it. And it was around this level, no, though not here exactly. Um, but, like I said, the main character blacked out. Oh, those were horrible misses. The main character blacked out during the murder of his uh, wife and son, or wife and sons, rather. Remember that. Maybe you're not like me. It's hard to say. You gotta fight it. Don't let this place do to you what it did to me. I can help you talk. I can make you well. I can give you control if you really want it. But first, you've got to show me. Come on now. Give it a try for me, won't you? Come on, you bastard, do it. You think you're better than us? I can only help you if you'll help me. Wait, does the wrath meter f charge up when I... I think it only charges when I, when I kill with uh, melee, right? You'll fucking hide in. I can't put it off forever. This place is stronger than you. Sounds like a convenient excuse to me. They won't leave you alone until you do it. Maybe not. Certain things a man has got to do. Oh, that was... Pretty terrible. I'm sorry. I I promise you the good uh, the good part is coming. Turns out the shiv is actually the correct weapon for dealing with these things now. Yeah. There we go. This is when I decided I love the game. Um, because, as it turns out, 
you are the monster. And I just killed myself in the explosion. <laughs> okay, that was pretty stupid. Not gonna lie, sorry about that. Um, I won't go through the entire sequence again on camera, I'll, uh, I'll skip it, but, um, yeah. And that's basically the plot of the game. That's, that's it. You are the monster, and the hero, at the same time. The moral choices, um, do have, like I said, real... Oh, that was a bit bullshit. The moral choices, like I said, do have a real consequences in the powers that you get, in the abilities, in what you can do, and I seem to recall the ending as well, but don't take my word on that, I don't quite remember. Um, yeah, this is, I mean, aside from that, the game's story is also fascinating. Now, it wasn't made with the greatest budget because well, I think the opening sequence is going to give that away, pretty much, because um, half the character's lips don't move when they talk. Which, I know, is uh, a bit of a turn-off for many, probably, but at the same time, it really doesn't matter. Um, the game is bloody fascinating. Um, graphically, it kind of holds up, if you think about it. I mean... No, um, rather, it holds up if you don't think about it too much. Uh, it creates a very neat atmosphere, and it gets the job done. Now, mind you, this isn't the most graphically um, impressive piece of work you've ever seen, and I have no illusions about that, but at the same time, the atmosphere is there, and... You know, notice how you can tear enemies' limbs off with bullets and stuff? As in, they react to the damage. This is something that Doom Eternal brags about. Now, obviously, it does it in a more uh, relevant way, and, you know, it's, it's, uh, it's a very different game, don't get me wrong, but, you know, this game did it in 2000, what, 6, 7? Doesn't matter. Um, yeah, and, and Doom Eternal's fantastic, don't get me wrong. I'm actually replaying the game now on, on, on weekends. Um, I say I'm replaying it. I play for about 30 to 40 minutes each weekend because that's that's what you get when you have a full-time job and spend three hours commuting every day. Um, which I'm not going to be doing for much longer. But anyhow... Yeah, this is... Uh, I said I wasn't going to go through the entire sequence, but the combat is kind of fun. And... Yeah, okay, it, it has its problems. The... Uh, melee bit especially, but what makes the game, I think, a little bit more um, interesting in that respect is how the combat changes for the better when you transform. And here we go again. Let's make sure I don't blow myself up again uh, this time. If you don't transform back, that can be deadly. Oh yeah, that that's that's a thing too. Actually, I actually don't remember that being a thing, but apparently it is. Fascinating game. Like I said, this is a gem out of time. It really, really is. Um, the good part is there's even a sequel called Ties That Bind, and... It explores the relationship between your character and the, well, someone else, and yada 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 stories that, that, I, that I don't want to spoil. Um, oh, cute little mouse. Yeah, um, like I said, gem out of time. It's bloody brilliant, this. Thank you. 
And, to be fair, I really like how much uh, bullets the demons can take. It makes every fight kind of challenging. It also makes getting ambushed like that a pain in the ass. Oh, for crying out loud. Okay. Jump. Um, it also makes it so you don't have to actually fight a lot of the time. You can just escape, but be aware that uh, enemies can um, can and do find creative ways to get to you. Now, what on God's green earth is that? What's taking so long? Do it! Fucking do it! Just fucking kill me! Bit unrealistic how the shells only drop now, but... That, I think, is called a suppressor. Uh, no, not the device, the monster. And all of a sudden, our hero feels a little bit inadequate. I think he just shot me through the wall. Kind of looks like he did. Oh no, he's a marksman, not a suppressor. Well, alright. I suppose. Um, you unlock... Well, I'm sorry, I say unlock like it's, a, it's an achievement. You um, encounter... Quite the variety of enemies later down the line as well, which I um, can confirm since I've played through the entire game, though years ago, and I'm speaking half through half uh, through nostalgia, half through, you know, actual fact of the matter, but I do remember that you meet a substantial amount of enemies later down the line. Um, now, let's transform into this thing, and I, I seem to recall that I used to use cheats. Um, just to be able to play as the monster a bit longer than the game wants you to. Um, that was always kind of fascinating to me. And it worked um, surprisingly well, even though you're not really supposed to. Play like the monster for long. It kind of get, gets the job done. Anyways, that's it. That's um, more or less the game. Now, there's other things to it. Um, like I said, the story is really, really good, which is why I'm trying to spoil as little of it as possible. The one thing I don't really like and hasn't really aged all that well is the flashlight. Um, it's a bit shite. As in, it doesn't really light anything up, um, and it's not very useful. But, you know. Can't have it all, I suppose. There you go. Um, you can find this game on GOG um, for, dirt, for a dirt cheap price, and you can genuinely have a blast on any system that, that you know, this, this will run pretty much on anything, um, nowadays at, at least, and yeah, um, it just works also, I mean, uh, I don't mean that in a Todd Howard way, I mean it, it literally just works, you just install it from GOG and it plays, um, it's not like a lot of the, the other games where, um, Oof, Jesus, that scared the crap out of me. It's not like a lot of the other games where you need to, you know, download the missing files or, I don't know, um, run in compatibility mode and, you know, fiddle with it in, in one way or another. Um, no, this, this genuinely just does work. And it works pretty darn well. So, anyways, 
that's about it from me, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you very much for watching. Like, subscribe, down below if you enjoyed the video, and we'll stay tuned with the rest of the content that I produce on this channel. Till next time, my name is Juggernaut. Have fun, take care, and uh, don't let the monsters get you. Bye-bye.